Ja. there exists a constant battle for survival. Welcome, my friends, to Atomics on a Friday, a fascinating journey into the realm of cybersecurity, data, and atomic testing. Today, we shall embark on an adventure with two seasoned experts who have roamed the cyber wilderness for years, honing their skills and strategies. Paul Michaud, a master of cyber shenanigans, has an uncanny ability to unravel the most perplexing digital mysteries. Alongside him is Michael Haag, a cyber threat connoisseur who has devoted his life to understanding and mitigating the ever-present dangers lurking in the shadows of cyberspace. Together, they shall guide us through the complex tapestry of this digital ecosystem, revealing hidden treasures and secrets that will undoubtedly leave us with a newfound respect for the world of cybersecurity. So, dear viewers, let us dive deep into the heart of this wondrous realm where the forces of good and evil collide in an eternal struggle, and let us explore what it truly means to protect our delicate digital existence. Join us on Atomics on a Friday. There exists a constant battle for survival. <laughs> Howdy. Here we go. Welcome, welcome. Are you still muted? Yeah. When you have too many Sorry. screens and you lose your mouse, <laughs> it makes it really difficult sometimes to unmute. So it's always that. It's buttons. Buttons everywhere. Look, when you're hunting APTs, you can have too, never have too many monitors. Uh, yeah, I know. You got your, you got your one crew over here and your other crew over there. Yeah, I mean, that's not how you're doing it. Like geography based, maybe. Like could be, you cut it. Uh, in... <laughs> maybe like. Color schema based, right? ah. severity of threat. Severity. APT is higher rated and different color than maybe UNCs or fins. I like the color idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, you probably can't just like give them colors instead of anything else. But how are you gonna sell your product if you don't have like cool colors <laughs> or stuff? My favorite is flax. Flax typhoon. And like, is it going to be like, soy typhoon? Are we going to pull in like? <laughs> I, I was like, what was funny is I was literally searching for in Google because I, I saw the link yesterday to the blog post, lost it. And so I was like, oh yeah, it's Microsoft's Flax Typhoon. So I'm, I'm searching Flax Typhoon. And of course, nothing related to it showing up. It's showing me Bolt Typhoon. I'm like, okay, how about just... Flex and they're doing a little Google dorking insight. Microsoft couldn't find it. I'm like, so I literally had to go to Microsoft site and then search Flex. And then I'm thinking the whole time, like, do I have any Flex seed laying around? I know. <laughs> yes. First thing I, I was looking for that soft ether hash from the blog. And the only place it came up was their blog. It's not on VT, it's nowhere else, and it's only there. It's the vpnbridge.exe, I think. I don't, did you dig into that or search uh, for the hash? Not the hash. The only thing I saw they gave were IPs and uh, JA3s. Well, they were passing unless the I hash. Missed, unless I missed yeah. the hash in the article, which is a high problem. All right. Flax Typhoon, <laughs> hash. Right there it's at the bottom. Yep, it's at the bottom. Oh, no, wait. What is this? Oh, it was the infrastructure, the SHA 1 TLS fingerprints, because, yeah. Yeah, because everybody's collecting and using those. That helps. Every product shares that. <laughs> I mean, cool. <laughs> we'll dive yeah. into this later because we'll hit it. We'll hit it. We'll hit it. Into the uh, the grouping, what we have. Grouping's. Spoiler alert! 
There's so many APTs coming. It's not even funny. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's good times. Um, cool. Well, buttons. Uh, yeah, our agenda today is MS Build. We have uh, shared a little bit. There's quite a bit of cool things to drop and share, which, and I was thinking about it, Paul. I feel like we've talked about MS Build on the show before. You remember? Okay. <laughs> I'm not the only one. No, no. It's, it might be a lot of rehashing. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I think it's an important thing because what's dead is alive again. And what's yeah. Alive again. Um, and MS and Build I, is one of those things that I feel like is going to make a comeback soon. Yeah. And that, yeah, totally. And I, I actually made slides today. Um, so there's actually a little bit more things to click through. So yeah, killing it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we started a new thing. Um, we were all talking about this, the two of us, and uh, about what, what you hunting? What are you hunting? We need to create a new yeah. segment called What You Hunting? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, clearly it's almost built today. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or uh, flax seeds and typhoons. <laughs> should should uh, pull that up. But yeah. Um, yeah. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Haig, threat researcher here at Splunk and maintainer of Atomic, Red Team, um, Lull Drivers, things like that. I like, uh oh, I'm missing one. It's like, it's like there's like four more projects that you're missing that you've launched in the past like two weeks. <laughs> I, I like but to we'll, build we'll things. High level. That's fine. I like to research things and thank you for joining us today. <laughs> but yeah, man. Oh, What's going on? What about you? I'm, what are you? Show, I'm not as distinguished as Mike is. Uh, I'm a threat hunter at Unit 42. Uh, I don't have as many cool projects as Mike has going on. <laughs> Lull drivers, boot kits, uh, shell sweep, and a plethora of other things in GitHub. Oh, all the cool stuff of creating the new uh, input comp for the Splunk forwarder. Oh, yeah. That was actually pretty Based cool. Based on... Yeah, so there's actually some fun things about that. Uh, actually, to go and enable a whole bunch of stuff, this turns out it wasn't enabled by default. Uh, we should talk about that comp at some point later in the future oh. for hunting methods. That's a nice. Very slick comp. Ready. That's awesome. That's so yeah, I know. I feel like we have so many cool today. things. We're limiting ourselves to MS Build when we have so many other things to talk about. <laughs> well, I think what we're going to talk about is flax seed typhoon. Uh, flax. Yes. What you hunting? That's the topic right now. Is what you hunting? Flax seeds. Yep. I Google flax seeds. I was probably. Uh, Sorry, I don't understand. Whoa. Or Flax Typhoon does not come up. When you're talking to Alexa? That was Google, man. But apparently... Google? Calm yourself, Google. The mic's off. Yes, it is. <laughs> For a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Always listening. Always uh, listening. Let's uh, All right. pull in... Uh... Flaxy Typhoon. Uh, oh, you're sharing your screen. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're in. Yeah. Okay. All right. So tell us so, about this nation state activity, why we should care, because this is what you hunting. You know that I don't actually read these word for word and I go straight to the good stuff um, yeah. based on you, our uh, you smash and grab. Yeah, but I did read a little bit. Uh, you clearly know more about the Chinese APT side of things than I do about <laughs> this. So I'll let you start because you read that part. Okay, so the part that I read was scroll down, scroll down, Keep right there, yeah. stop. See where it says low bends? <laughs> right there, up. Ah, uh, yes. Up. Oh, yeah, up. basically there. You can go right there, that's fine, but it was higher up. Um, um, that's all I saw, close. and the first thing I thought was, okay, cool. Um I didn't think of anything too new out of this, especially when I saw China Chopper. I was like, what year is it? I actually, that's the meme I dropped um, was what year is it when I saw China Chopper. Um, I thought the juicy potato or the potato thingies were cool. Um, the VPN piece was neat, but I think the it part where... Italian. Yeah, and I, I, I think 
overall, like the one thing I wish the blog went into, and I, I don't know if they're just trying to hold back like data from publicly disclosing or something, but I think they should have shared more on the scheduled task. The sticky key thing was like, so 1999, um, like give us something fresh. Um, the LSAS Isn't stuff. That the APT? <laughs> exactly. I feel yeah. like I look at stuff like sticky keys that I've seen for the past two decades and still yeah. comes around to this day. But everybody wants yeah. to hunt APTs. Meanwhile, you could literally go hunt for sticky keys and turn up APTs. Guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. Throwing a lot of heat right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so anyway if you scroll down the only other like so the piece that when they talk about initial access it was like very generic and i was just kind of like okay but then all the queries they provide at the end is like sql being popped and spawning shells from the sql processes which i was happy they gave a list of them instead of just like <laughs> sql.exe or something i'm actually i was surprised Let's they actually go dropped break like, some of those down Sure. Because there are some yeah. tie-ins to MS Build, which we're going to touch on. But uh, I liked yeah. your point, though. But the one thing that does stick out to me is specifically, the, especially on, like, C2 side of things. It's always the Cobalt Strikes, the, you know, yep. Slivers, Beaver Rat, um, et cetera. You, you missed the most important one, which is Metasploit, because that's Metasploits are up this year. This Metasploits week. are up this yeah. week? Okay. Keep yeah, according to my Intel I, reports, look, I don't know where you've been reading, but my Intel is telling me Metasploits are up. I have to find that article because it's driving me insane. I swear they said they brought the Metasploit and deployed it internal once they compromised the network. I have to find that, and it's driving me up wall. I've been looking for the past day and a half ever since I saw it the one time and then we were discussing it yesterday. Here is the here it is. It's my Intel insights right here. I'll share it so everybody can have the do you insights. Really have it? Dude, I got the link. This is the Intel Insights. Wait, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. I know. <laughs> I'm just trolling because <laughs> Metasploits yeah, are, are up. <laughs> anyway, going back. Continue. In this case, soft ether being the uh, C2 component, which you yep. also do see things like Plink, et cetera, uh, leverage. But in this case, soft ether being one that I'm not familiar with, so that was kind of interesting to dig into, which yep. they do touch Same. on in the... Uh, yeah, stuff. Of course, you have things like your juicy. Go ahead. Quick question: When you looked into it, did it seem similar to um, uh, our clone to you? The way it's configured, like the the back end of it all. I don't know if you installed it or not, but I didn't install it. Basically, it was pivoting off of a bunch of different attributes in like VTI of yeah. like what what soft ether does. Um, cool. There's things you could look for like default installs and. It can be legitimately used. It's not like it was some OST that was created to just do OST things like it's a legitimate tool, but in this case, being used for uh, remote access to the endpoints. Uh, right. Of course, you have your sweet China chopper shells. Uh, if you need detection ideas, go read any blog post that touches on China chopper for the past 15 years. Should be good on that. Yeah. Persistence. Yeah. I, to your point on scheduled tasks, I would like to see more information on what are the schemas, like the naming conventions that are being used and the URIs for them. What are the executors off of, like the actions that are occurring from those? Like, those e even helpful. like, even the WM, the Wimic stuff they share, but like it's, there's no screenshot. It's very generic. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this to me was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Like the section here. So if you look only at the screenshot, you were like, oh, just cert util. But if you go up and read the other low bins that they use, you got IWR, cert util, bits admin. <laughs> that was that kind state, of like, was like, okay. <laughs> I want so more screenshots. Just, you know what? Just give us the data. Like at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Where was I going? Oh, yeah. The service create I thought was interesting. Uh, service being created from a non-standard path, you know, should stand out. I like the name that they're using, that display name, which can obviously try to blend in, um, you know, mass, whatever you want to call it. Like it definitely looks more legitimate that way. Same with like Conhost, the name of the soft ether uh, binary VPN bridge piece, which I thought was cool. Seriously. Yeah. 
baseline the services the services yeah. created what is it and why and i think most tools when i mean tool i mean like a sim product have a canned analytic or something that looks for um like con host without the double ends and things like that so there's there should be some canned stuff out there today you know for the most part in every product i hope if not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm so glad you called that out because I was about to tweet that and I was going to say, what year is this? <laughs> I literally was about to do it. I was, I left it alone. I told you what is old yeah. is new. What is dead yep. is alive. Yeah. It's going to work and it's going to happen. Anyway, so let's keep going. Uh, yep. What I did appreciate is they actually gave the queries that you can yep. go run. So if you're a Sentinel or you're a Defender for Endpoint shop, you can go run these. Um, so let's kind of like look at some of these. Now, while there's variance in them, the concepts of what you're trying to do is almost identical, which is renamed binaries matching on internal binary metadata to try and identify that coupled with a couple pieces of information, like specific yeah. users, specific processes doing the initiation. But the idea is looking at, again, Renamed instances, execution out of inter interesting things, things that normally should not be making outbound network connections uh, to like external hosts, things like of that nature. So a lot of it, right? So in this case, soft ether bridge, soft ether VPN bridge renamed to con host or DLL host. So in this case, looking for original file name or the file description of soft ether, but then you're saying, I have the process execution with the command line of being con host or DLL with the prep, with the creative pop process path. Words are hard of all of these. So you're basically yeah. looking at variances of where things are just not equating or there's difference in what's actually current, right? If I launch PowerShell from PowerShell's normal path, that path should be this, that internal name should be PowerShell, that process name should be PowerShell. When those three things don't match, that's interesting, right? That should be a signal of some form. But again, going through a lot of these, like pretty straightforward. Again, seeing a lot of the MS SQL stuff in here was very interesting. Uh, but where was the one where, oh, here we go. Yep, that one. So basically, look for child processes of cert util, which are initiated by a variance or a bunch of different SQL processes. That's interesting. Yes. Do you know about yep. SQL instances running in your environment? <laughs> Have you baselined your SQL servers? I mean, even just, anything? <laughs> <laughs> even just like, I mean, any product today should be able to give you, you, you should be able to query your product, your whatever tools you're using, looking for even just SQL server.exe. What are standard child procs off of these things? And, and just the quick one off my head was like, just look for any low bin coming out of them. And there's going to be some. It'll be legit, but like certain so for any well been executing, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. System thirty two, you should be looking at. Yep. Yeah, it was kind of the first thing I was triggering on that. Although, not I to did shoot, like. Oh, go ahead. But some EDRs have analytics that will do things like frequency of hey, this process has never executed on this box in the past 30 days, and you get a nice little alert, and you get information yep. about that. That is cool. So sometimes you get some interesting analytics from that aspect of using like frequency and analysis and rarity and occasion of execution, especially based on user or endpoint. So there are some things that could do that. If you have SIM and you're piping all that data and your EDR does not do that, you could also do things very similar yourself. Yep. Money. Money. Let's keep going. Uh, wait. Yeah, you're hitting the end. Oh, yeah. oh so all of game. those, if you if you go back up real quick, quick link, all of those are links to KQL queries or their hunt queries. So if you wanted to like check it out, Let's you can look click it. it. Oh, I... oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, but yeah. Uh, I... They're all basically just the, yeah, Sentinel queries. That's what you would call them. But, yeah. Just go look at those two. Yeah. They're all in there. Guaranteed. It's admin. It's old as new. It, 
And if you run that, that RDP fun. one, I'm sure you'll find all the anomalous RDP activity. <laughs> so yeah. Does Jan in marketing need to RDP to Mike in accounting's endpoint? Probably not, but it's probably suspicious. Yes. If your user doesn't need to RDP, just turn it off. Disable it for the users in GPO and disable that rule in the firewall because everybody should be using endpoint-based firewalls. And if you're not, it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very shilling on post-based firewalls, which everybody should do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's your point when you're talking about the hash. It's, it's the shot yeah. one fingerprint. That's I was confused. Yeah. I thought they gave us J3s, but. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So some IPs and some fingerprints. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck out there. Here's a bunch of stuff. Although, if you're not a KQL shop and you have something like a SIM or a different EDR, are there any utilities that could convert these queries for us? Isn't there, um, oh, I was going to say, um, isn't it like a KQL to isn't it like a converter, unicoder, uncoder? Uncoder? Yeah, but isn't that uh, wait? I don't remember. I don't remember. I thought you could. Or just go to Sigma. Things. Just go find the yeah. thing in Sigma and like just go look at this and then go find Sigma and then run it to your specified uh, product. And yep. that will probably be your best bet. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Right. But again, a lot of these are Majority of everything shared was pretty much standard. Baseline. Yeah, just your usuals. Cool. This is our Baseline very tools. our very detailed. Okay, so that was what we're hunting. Um, anything else you're hunting? Anything else cool? MS build. MS build. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only other. <laughs> the only other. Yeah, the only other one that I was looking at this week. That was probably maybe interesting was the Windows error reporting service of elevation of privilege vulnerability, CVE 2023-36874. Is that a no filter? One. Probably. I don't know. Uh, it's the CrowdStrike. Uh, no filter. Oh, no, I didn't. CrowdStrike plug. You didn't see that? Mm, I don't recall. Okay. Yeah. That one was, there's like a bunch of POCs out now too. Uh, I think it was that one. I don't know. There's Actually. I looked at uh, like eight, eight different things. Deep Instincts uh, No Filter, another LPE using a Windows Error Reporter. Does that sound familiar? Maybe. Oh. I don't know. It was a CrowdStrike thing. And then there was a oh. bunch of POC drops. That's awesome. Well, there was that. <laughs> Anywho, moving on. So yeah, okay. No Filter, go check it out. It's pretty interesting. CVEs that Mike was talking about. CrowdStrike, go check those out. Go hunt for your flax seeds. Yes. Let's uh, touch on some Noah's build. And the this gift build. that keeps on giving. Only, from what I understand, only red teams use it nowadays. Um, do they? But do they? That is the question. All right. So MS I am build. I'm curious how many red teams are actually still. Tell using us it. about MS build. What is MS build? It is a tool for making magic. You type in some words into an IDE, it converts those into ones and zeros and builds a program if you typed your words correctly. Very high level, explain like I'm five. Um, but, uh, so it is the build engine for applications. So it's baked in with Visual Studio. So when you compile code from Visual Studio, it will default to this build. Of course, you do not have to use MS Build itself. You can also use MS Build standalone. Uh, basically, it's going to have a structure of an XML document uh, in C proj files, CS proj, P R O J. You can also use MS Build for C applications, and then you can also do uh, like .NET Build. Um, so if you have .NET applications, those can be used for building as well. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means an attacker can bring in something like an XML file that has the basically structured in a way that they can point MS build to it and compile a payload on the fly, which is great. So instead of bringing in tools, you're bringing in potentially files or binaries by themselves and then building them on the fly. 
uh, we actually saw some really interesting use cases during the red team operations of how they're trying to bring these in um, and execute them in different ways and also using different methods of search order hijacking uh, coupled with some of the MS build stuff, which is actually pretty interesting. What's up? Are you sharing? No. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, go ahead. the highest level, it just, again, takes a file, does magic based on parameters that are specified inside that XML file. It can also do things with VB. Um, and then it will output binary. That is the highest level of MS build. But the flexibility of what you can supply it is almost endless. Uh, which is actually the interesting part of it. So not necessarily the binary itself, but the capabilities that you can use with MS build to actually create uh, a Let's jump in. Okay. I will, I have a couple of things that we could jump into uh, sharing screen. And a whole bunch of different things we can share out as well as oh, we're chugging along here. Let's see. Come uh, best resource. There we go. So the first one, yeah, I'll share this first one. This is just uh, the MS Bill's Strontic page because I think it's it's always just neat to see kind of the <clears throat> the overarching yeah the little boss piece here, um, but yeah I, I I always like to kind of just see this like if I'm looking for like a new bin or trying to understand what's all the deets, Strontic really helps just kind of break down all the different standard out you know what can this thing do or run even though I may not know everything about what each one of these perform. Kind of gives me an idea of just different switches that are out there. You can use short form, short form on a lot of these, which most have been. Um, but the other cool thing about Strontic is they pull in all of the different things from like Sigma or Lobos and Atomic Red Team, things like that, um, which is cool. So you can always get some ideas on detection ideas or content, you know, down here. Something I did do, uh, I'm going to stop sharing this one, is I was thinking about, I was like, I wonder publicly when I was preparing uh, for this, what's like some like most recent activity with MS Build in the wild? And I Googled it. Let me reshare. And I found this blog from, I think it's Anomaly. Yeah, Anomaly. This is from 2021. But when you Google a little bit harder, and I could probably Google a lot harder, um, you may find someone else using it. But it it seems like it dwindles down, and then it kind of comes back over time with the use of MS Build by adversaries or maybe red teams too. Um, but the interesting thing I got out of this was there's a hash. I stole the hash from somewhere. Anyway. I'll share it in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The file. The file name was just proj. Um, and something that I think Paul and I both learned from watching adversaries use MS build over time was that the extension can kind of be pretty much anything. Um, typically not nothing. Matter. Yep. It doesn't just doesn't matter. Do it. And yep. in the documents, when you're looking at MS build, to Mike's point, there's a couple ways you can go about it. One is put MS build in the directory with your project file, and it will just read from the directory. Very similar to like loading images, search yep. order hijacking. So look from that little that current working directory. <clears throat> Next thing you can do is point it to a file like malware.safe. It doesn't care about the extension if you specify the file. It's because it's going to interpret it because it's just XML, so it's going to start reading magic headers. And then from there, it does, as long as every the XML is structured properly, it will go through and do all the magic. Um, so it doesn't explicitly have to be pointed to or given the value of .csproj, or I think there's like three default extensions that it's going to create. Um, yep. And if you use Visual Studio to compile it, there's different configuration options. There's two actually, uh, I forgot what the term is. Uh, Tags, flags, something. Basically, there's two parameters that are different than if you were just to point MS build itself via command line to it. So building in Visual Studio offers two different uh, parameters versus if you're just going to build from the command line. Yeah. Now, this is a normal looking 
Visual Studio Code to MS Build compilation yeah. lineage. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's basically what I wanted to show. I I have a repo where I shared a lot of this stuff in the past. Um, but this is just a screenshot from there. <laughs> but yeah, v Visual Studio building code. Um, something that like I think a lot of defenders if you don't have a large organization and MS build fires once in a blue moon or every once every 30 days on a random machine or build server or something, you know, hunting for it, it's kind of simple, but if you have 50,000 endpoints or more hundred thousand millions, MS builds probably popping left and right. And you might see it coming from this. You might see it coming from like Jenkins build servers or things building Microsoft software or binaries, things like that. It can get kind of noisy. Um, so I think as you like baseline or understand as a defender, like how and where does MS build typically run or come from? I think the screenshot I missed on this is the actual one with the, uh, the command line because the command line is different. I think you alluded to it, Paul, was the command line is different coming from Visual Studio than it is coming from like say an adversary running MS build. Um, and I think, I don't know if I put this in here in our notes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take notes. But one quick note here is um, the path of MS build. Um, and I know we've talked about it being used or moved or someone bringing it in and putting it in a different place. That's a very important like key point of tracking MS build in your environment, path of executing from. Um, so path, we, I don't know if we touched on it being renamed, but a renamed MS Not build. Yet. Yeah, go for Very it. Similar. <laughs> yeah, rename which, MS build is a sketchy MS build. So coupling, which we touched on with the flaxseed um, flax APT seed. bakers. Uh, again, matching things is super important of understanding where normal normalization of path occurs, coupled with the actual process name, coupled with internal binary metadata that you can use to tie the three together. And when you start to have variances of either one or more of them, like that's really anomalous. So in the case of something where uh, in one scenario, we saw a red team take the hex value of MS build, store it in the header of a Word document, the hex values of the XML file in the footer, use VB script to write it out to a temp folder, basically rewrite those so they build them, and then using WMI call process create to then point to the binary, which then pointed specifically to that file. And they masqueraded the names to make it try and blend in with like office nuzz execution. So if you're not looking for things like renamed instances or bit, uh, misaligned normalization of path of standard execution, you could fly right through. You won't see it. Because when you start to use things like WMI, you start to decouple the parent process lineage, and then you get some interesting things. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things. And then I was thinking, just looking at this, it's like, if I were to take MS build and couple it with something, well, I don't know, like parent process spoofing, I could try and make it look like my parent is dev environment and tie it back into Visual Studio and try and do it that way. So there's a couple different things that potentially would be interesting to see how EDR detection analytics go against those those different uh, methods or ways yep. an adversary could do it. Yeah, and the the one thing I was as you're kind of digging into different types of execution, the one thing I we don't see too much, at least not in a while, is the use of different. Um, if you Google sub T Casey Smith. MS build, you'll come up across all of those variations and different types of ways to execute Mimi cats, um, like just different ways to run <laughs> different tools. And the idea for, for this, for MS build and why it's on the Lobens page is to evade all the different application control tools out there. So if I could run MS build to spawn Mimi cats, you're going to approve it because MS builds an author authorized tool it's, or signed trusted. authorized trusted tool. Yeah. And that's and where, yeah. What's interesting, like thinking about that aspect is um, 
like EDR itself, when you think about what happens with MS Build, especially on very large builds, right? Think about um, large deployment or applications. Uh, think like Adobe is going to compile Photoshop by like that installs like what 10, 12 gigs compile time on that is huge. Like Solar Winds or even like your EDR things. Like so, when you have EDR on those build systems or those dev systems, uh, EDR is going to try and monitor that. And it's going to try and record all those file rights, which means you have performance hits. So from a standpoint of the security thing, you're going to loosen those dev systems. So by identifying the systems that should normally be executing them, putting in specific policy or specific grouping for those uh, things and security tools so that you can monitor those. But then anybody else, if it's not normally doing it, just block it, just kill it, right? Yep. Like it doesn't, you don't need it, don't allow it. Right, and when it does occur as a problem, then that's when you need to, to service it. But you got to start focusing more on prevention on that side of things, because otherwise, it's just going to play whack a mole. Yeah. Oh, new thing drops, new lull bin. Oh, you can use this tool to do something else instead. So now instead of actually doing, making progress in your security stack, you're just playing the whack a mole game with the new thing drops. Everybody loses their mind, and we go on the day and the rinse and repeat the next day. Yep. <laughs> yep. But. I, so I lost the point there. But yeah, really identifying the norm and like what should be and then figuring out how those are coupled and tying those together. Because again, if it's supposed to do it, you can have business impact, which is again a bad thing. We don't want to be impacting business. We want to be business enablers. That's how security operations should focus on. It's enabling the business to do what it needs to do with the right amount of uh, risk associated to that and doing things that don't need to be done to avoid that risk. That's just a great instance. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, yeah. So I, I flipped the slide because this is the kind of like the other awesome. side of, yeah, so this is like the other side of MS Build. You're not a developer, but all of a sudden MS Build spawns and it has this command line. And the screenshot you're not seeing was the prior one from a dev, from a dev instance, which is the actual command line arguments. It has like switches, it's building something where this is literally everything's baked into that CS proj. It literally just runs all of it and it calls everything it needs to call and it's done. Um, I can't remember what this one is, but it spawns like search protocol host and stuff like that. Probably Cobalt Strike. <laughs> but, um, Cobalt's are down, Mike. Those I know, Yes, <laughs> the splits are up. Um, which I guess I could share my... Nah, it's fine. I'll share it later. But yeah, so this is the other side of it. You see MS build run, no command line arguments. It's just calling a file. Why? Like, you know, MS build shouldn't just spawn out of the forest. Why is it just randomly spawning today? Interesting. And this is where like when you baseline, you'll see all your dev stuff and then you may or not see like weird red team based activity. Seriously, just go look at the locations of those CS proj files. Yeah. Yeah. Them coming out of the proj in the command line, the file in a random non-standard place stands out. What's writing it? Yeah. 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 We're something like, dropping it. Yep. Is, is the other key too, especially like .xml, because you can also do .xml. Um, the amount of like random file extensions is through the roof. And oh. Demo. Demo time. Demo. Right. Oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, this. You want me to share first? Or you want to share first? What are you going to run? <laughs> no, what you prepared. <laughs> oh, I thought you prepared them. Uh oh. I, it was because I was always going to run the two atomics. Unless you oh. ran those. Go ahead and run them. I'll do the. Uh, oh. I'll do something else. Right. Do you have those? Because if you have those, great. Because I didn't. I'm not going to be on those. <laughs> I know the T number. If you need the T number, T eleven twenty seven double o one. Yeah, something like that. We need to get like transition videos for when we like switch to the next topic. Like da 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 da, you know, and like has a song and a theme and. Yeah. Okay, too many Next screens. Time. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Well. 
Okay. Any, uh, oh, you're ready. Okay. I was going to fill it up Maybe. with some coffee talk. <laughs> what coffee you got today? Um, today was a lucky day. I got Dutch Bros. Dutch Bros? Yeah. Good Question, Dutch Bros or Dutch Brothers? I have no idea. I, we don't have those around here. Ah, well, move west. Uh, oh, yeah, what was I doing? Um, Ipmo. What was that number again? 1127 001. Tab complete. Oh. Uh oh. That's stupid error. Uh, no. <laughs> At least it works. Hopefully. I updated it. So I'm there you go. To okay. So, very high level. We'll show details in a second, but he needs. MS build using inline tests with C sharp, but then again, because we can do whatever we want with MS build, also got a little VB in there. So let's go take a look at test number. Oh, I need to keep that. So let me do this. Take a look at our details. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, project file is going to exist on disk. If it's not there, we'll attempt to go get it. And then all we're going to simply do is point out, uh, where is it? <laughs> there we go. So we're just going to call MS build straight to the C project file. But let's go open that up. And let's take a look at actually what it looks like, because I think that is pretty handy. I will share the link to the source of these as well. Um, so I'm curious what you're about to share them. So, but yeah, yeah, double tap, go for it. See what happens. She see what happens. Yeah, especially this, this project file. There Why did it open in WordPad? <laughs> <laughs> Fix that. They open this in WordPad. Open it in Skype. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me Skype this uh, C project file. Here. <laughs> Should have the option to send it to Teams instead. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And uh, you should definitely be cautious of running this now because it was definitely created by Casey. Yeah. So real quick, one thing that I will call out related to mod loads um, is the Microsoft Build Task V40 DLL. Um, if you see, typically, whenever I see that DLL roll up, there is some net application foolery going on um and that's that's definitely a query i've had and have found like suspect things occurring um based uh, on what's that what's the other one is it uh, clr .dll? yeah clr um ms is it ms core e dll ms core wks no uh. no but yeah i know ms core that's another popular one but the, this is, I know we, I think I tweeted it this week about DLLs and mod loads, but like, this is a good one. Like if you see these things loading up by other binaries, it's typically there's some kind of .NET trickery or foolery um, occurring. And, but yeah, it might even be install util at that point, but there's a lot of interesting things. So it's a good I place to monitor. Studio installed on this box? What? Ship it. Okay, so we looked at the VB version, and in this case, this will be our C sharp version. Yep. So this part should look yep. very similar. Again, so we could populate the entire thing inside of here, change this around, and make this very interesting one. But let us go. You good? Yep. Drop my pen. Drop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's rip it. So yeah. we should see this now execute and pull calc. Is it calc? Actually, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, it should just be a, a right line. Wait, no, this is task two. What was task one? That's not right line. Waiting. 
It says it's succeeded. Where did it go? <laughs> For real stone. All right, well, let's try test number two. <laughs> let's see here in a second, too. Track that one out for a second. I did run these uh, yesterday. Not on this box, but on a different one. I got alerts, so that was good. Well, pretty cool. Does it actually execute it? I don't think it does. I think it just builds it. Um, it should run. I thought it ran something. It doesn't. Oh, it should. Yeah, it prompts you. See, it says right there, hello from a visual basic inline task. That's the only thing they do. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's not like, I'm yeah, just... it's not, it's not super sexy, but yeah, it doesn't like pop calc. And what did I run the other day where I pop calc? Problem when you do too many things and don't <laughs> dot the floor. Here's where your notes are at. Yep. Okay. So it writes it. There it is. It did yep. it. So it worked. Okay. Yeah. I should have known. It's Casey. These things definitely always work. Oh, yeah. And whatever you're running is completely safe. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, two MS builds. Yes. It's a lot of different variants that you can do from that. There are. So it's not explicitly tied to T1127001, but there are other instances of C sharp project files and XML files that could be replaced and implemented here and give you different things that are inside of different tests within Atomic Red Team. So even though these two tests explicitly point to these, there are other files that could be supplemented and used inside of here. You could actually change it. Uh, you can go in and modify the input path and change like your the path to whatever, you can put them all in the same folder. Tons of different options here and expand pods. Yeah, I must build. It like keeps on giving. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that's fun. I'm just trying to find one more, I'm trying to find one that works off the internet here. <laughs> that's a good quest. Oh, uh, it was on my EDR box, that's why. Oh, that's gone. Okay. I'm going to run to get Kelly. Here we go. Let's try this. All right, download. Just try to download like some fancy one here so that we have like a really cool demo example. Yeah, I did try that one already. Did it All work? right. No. I'll show you. One sec. Three pop ups. Go away. Okay, that one worked. Okay, okay, okay. I got I got one that works. Oh just close PowerShell. And bye. Okay, let me get, get the end of atomic back here. Let's see here. Uh, notes. Yep, project files in the Visual Studio, C Proj, BD Proj. BCX Prosh and others contain MS build XML code that executes when you build a project by using the IDE. Okay. All right, we're ready. Oh, we're ready. Okay. Um, yeah, so what I did is I downloaded some random stuff off the internet. Um, in this case, this is one from MS Build Shell. Uh, and the idea is that it will spawn a PowerShell host within MS build. Um, as you can see, it does call out like system management automation. There's that MS build task piece, uh, things like that. So in uh, everything right here, I'm not an expert on MS build, but you can kind of point to like all the different DLLs and references and functions and whatnot in Windows. And then you can see it's a very, very long 2,586 lines of stuff. So uh, I ran this off the internet. Let me just uh, bring it up here. Du, du, du. Uh, so yeah, here's this one. In this build shell, and it just spawns PowerShell within it. So it's a new PowerShell window? Yep. I don't know if you can That's exit it. No. It's all what? <laughs> um, so then go back here. 
Right. And so then, uh, yeah, I ran some other ones. So you mentioned Mimi Cats. I ran this one from the internet. It gets there, but I think it's so old. It was like seven years old. Um, so yeah, it just fails. So we need to fix that. I don't think we need to fix that one. <laughs> we can just let it stay dead. OK. <laughs> um, and so uh, the other. MS buildness that I wanted to at least share and bring up is we do have a atomic test harness for MS build. Yes. Um, if you have not geeked out on the test harnesses, highly recommend it. It's as simple as install module. Just run this in your console there. Um, go back here, or you know, when you have it rolling, you have all the the, the modules and everything like that, commandlets. So you can just go in. To, I'm just going to show it on the UI. There's a ton, not a ton, but there's enough. There's MS build inside invoke MS build is kind of like just everything related to ATH MS build. Um, what's cool is you can specify the different languages for what you want to run. So we, we showcase what was it VB and C sharp. Um, yeah. So you can call J script, which maybe folks knew about, didn't know about. Um, oh, Jscript.net. Yeah. When's the last time you've seen something like that? I honestly, it's been a hot minute for MS Build. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully There's... somebody brings this back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And the nice thing is if you are uh, within your testing pipeline, you or you know, you want to validate your coverage and you want to have better coverage for MS Build, the test harness is probably where you want to chill. Um, you can see here like the different examples calling out the fact that it's just txt so we talked about you know it being in a non-standard file extension um this particular file instance cli yep yep exactly so just having it in the same directory boom um here's moving it so moving it to a different destination and actually i think it's renaming ms build to foo.txt yeah copies ms build renames it and executes um, use a different language. Yeah, there's this test harness is, gosh, it's been a hot minute since I've seen it, but it's very, very thorough. <laughs> um, you could even ship in your own custom code. So if you want to use your own, you know, anything you want to run with it, like in this case, it'll start PowerShell. It's a great way to learn all the nuances and differences, um, all the parameters. I haven't messed with this in a long time, so you're going to see me fumble here, but it's as simple as once you get the test harness installed, you know, you can tap complete to get to MS build. <laughs> um, you, I mean, first, you know, start with the basic of just show me like the examples because maybe I just want to copy and paste to start. Like, just want to make sure I know what I'm doing, right? So, um, Let's just go to the top here and grab number one. That was the easiest. Well, and number one was too easy. Number two. Uh, yep. Boom. Go. And the nice thing about the test harness is if you are running a lot of things at once, you get the output. So you got the contents of that file. It's running PowerShell, which it was a hidden window. You're not going to see it. It's a child proc. Um, here's the path of it. So again, we mentioned, or here's the full command line, right? MS build test.txt. There's no command line arguments. It's running the standard MS build and it's running something out of a non standard potential path from your developer or, you know, Susie in accounting, um, things like that. So pretty cool. And then I want to call out the language one because I think that's kind of neat. So you could tab complete through these. Now, if I was looking for mod loads here, I think something that I would look for is like Java J script being loaded up by um, msbuild.exe. And in this case, you'll see the change in the contents of that file. So there's that one and here's this one. So you got your two differences. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of power, but I mean, you'll note real quick, the command line still pretty much stayed the same. Let me go back to our examples here. Let's see if we can change something. Um, yeah, let's try that one. That sounds interesting. Use unregister assembly task. So still looking at the same here, which again, we can change. 
Yeah, lots of things. <laughs> so yeah, just even just simple as that. Possibilities are endless. Yeah, now our command line, which I would see in Splunk, is just blank. There is no MS build. You know, what is it loading? I don't know. It's just MS builds just spawning today, like, right? Like, who knows By what itself. it's doing? <laughs> yes. Um, I think the default runner, probably, yeah, just a standard test proj. So, yeah, you get kind of crazy with this. So, you can tab complete through here, um, you know, change language. Make sure you guys can see this here. Um, yeah, there's, I don't even know. I'm just going to click buttons here. So, yeah. So um, that's ATH, push that away. This is my old uh, carbon black response query piece that I made many, many years ago, three years ago, apparently. Um, just cover standard behaviors or things that I always saw that were interesting with uh, MS build. Again, MS not build so- connections. connections. What was that? Yeah, yep. yeah. Net, um, network connections. It's good. Yep. Yeah, even like the command line. Um, yeah, just looking for like just odd behaviors. And again, different tools will have different, you know, visibility points here. So you, you may have to like, you know, run through the test harness, see what you get. Uh, run through, you know, I don't know, anything you find on the internet with like Mimi Cats, <laughs> download random stuff. Look for those non standard process spawns, um, you know, baseline your environment, see what's normal. And then here's like those inline task piece. I think I was able to attribute these in the past to inline task. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Cross process events into other processes. Um, you know, MS build spawning or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually a really interesting um, query to look for. There's a lot of times developers will not spawn MS build themselves from like command or PowerShell. So seeing it come off of a shell, just spawning randomly is really interesting to me. And I always like to find those because it led to interesting behaviors potentially, um, depending on who you're going after or what you're looking for. But this is a really, really good hunt is just like looking for people interactively spawning MS build. And then here's our normal, not normal, admin or evil. And then there's that. So yeah. Uh, last thing I'll share is I mentioned that in an anomaly blog, this is that hash. Um, I got the hash from them and I opened it up and I wanted to show because I thought it was kind of neat. Um, it's funny to me that they did so many, so many different points of obfuscation to try to hide uh, different pieces to this, where in reality, most likely your AV product will not catch what's inside here. Um, so this is something to test, play with it, see what happens or don't, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, here's MSHTA running DB script execute, things like that. So, and here's that different, maybe a potentially second proj file. And then here's the shell code. But yeah, I thought that was cool. That's pretty lit. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think we have like one more slide, which is pretty much everything we've been talking about. <laughs> uh, death rights, uh, not saving paths. Blah, blah. Yeah, I think we got everything. Cool, man. Oh yeah, office products with MS build stuff is definitely very interesting. Yeah. Just due to the size, me. I doubt you're gonna see too much of that these days. Uh, if you do, it's probably inside of an archive. Just when we saw it, that, I think that those documents were at least 500 bytes. Uh, it was yeah. pretty hefty. Um, and I think the last thing, I know we talked about <laughs> before we went live. I think the last thing that's of interest here is there are very, very new versions of MS Build coming out and different .NET pieces coming out all the time. Um, it's changing. And so what we may not be talking about today there is probably activity occurring where it's using new .NETs and new everything. And so just something to be aware of. If it's not just standard MS build, XE, 
spawning a proj file. It's something else spawning it. Um, and just something to be aware of. There's a lot changing, and Microsoft is definitely still developing on this platform. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you, all right. Paul. Sounds good. Catch you all fun. next time. Yes. And, uh, book club. Nice Check out tweets soon. Book club. Starting That's a great idea. Comics. Book club. We'll catch yes. you next time. See y'all. Have a great Peace weekend. Off. See you in two. Bye.